Hi, I'm Mickey Hey, thank you. We're with the New Jersey Public Relations Committee, and we're going to do a presentation on doing large projects. Uh, in our region, we have multiple projects running at the same time, but we have gotten into the practice of doing large scale projects and take additional funding and additional resources. Uh, got PowerPoint up. Um, yeah, he's, he's trying to get it up. Okay. Uh, while we're doing that, we've both been involved in uh, public relations for decades and been involved with both doing local and some of the multi regional projects that we've done throughout the years. Uh, the first thing we're going to start talking about is some of the issues that come up with doing large projects. And there's some of the things to focus on. Uh, one of them is uh, we need to take a look at the committee itself. When we start looking at some of these projects, uh, timing is critical. We start talking doing the bus project, we start talking about doing some of these mass spellings or projects of the Department of Corrections. They go over a long period of time and there's windows of opportunity where we can do these projects and the timing of the project itself becomes critical. Sure. We also start looking at uh, the actual resources. Doug, are you able to share? I'm sorry. Right. Don't find it. It's up there somewhere. Um, here he is. Okay. All right. There it is. Uh, the timing is everything. How we set the timing of the project up, how we walk through the timing of the project is critical. Um, most of the time when we're doing some of these projects, they have been on a timeline that we're working with for, for several years. Some of these projects exceed the term limits of the people on the committee. So our committee members, uh, we've both been chair people at different times, we've rotated through, uh, we stay on the committee. So when you start getting involved with some of these projects, this is, a, I finished up my commitment and I'm done. This is a member of the committee. So these projects run through, uh, no, it's not. I go back to the other one for a minute. Um, can you hear me? Or, yeah, say that. Okay. Um, we need to look at the resources of the committees themselves. What resources, skill levels do we have on the committee? Communication, time frame, how involved can we be? Some of these projects, you need a lot of interaction, a lot of letter writing, uh, some funding and negotiation. Uh, and we need to look at how we have the network. A lot of the committees, some of the projects we're going to talk about, run in five different committees in our region, multi-regional and world services. So how good can we network through our fellowship to bring in some of the different resources? Funding is always an issue. And we'll look at some of the issues. When we take on large projects, uh, there is an element of risk. Uh, we're now looking with a large project, large budget, large time frame uh, issues. And it's really easy to get into issues. Uh, and you go to that next one, next slide. And we'll go through these kind of slides. Okay. Yeah. But we look at multiple projects at a time and work on them individually. Uh, we try to keep track of them. And this is some of these projects that have been on here and not done for years. Next slide. Uh, and uh, Ray's going to jump in here and start talking about drug court and also some of those other issues. Ray, we're covering that. Okay. As you see in this outline alone, just reaching out to drug court, we started in 2017. And by the time we got done with it, it was 2018. Uh, the money that we were able to be allocated for basic text as well as intro guys, we had $5,000 that was allocated to us. We were able to get it in 27 vintages which is the drug courts itself, all the participants, judges, probation officers, and parole officers. So everybody has a copy of what Narcotics Anonymous, who we are, and this is the letter that we presented to the, depart, uh, to the head of the drug court. We went there in person, me and Mickey, we went to the loading dock, we met with them, we handed off the basic text, the intro guides, and they signed off on it. I do not give out literature unless they sign on. And we're going to know where it's going. And at this time, all the vintages, they had all that were still in contact at the time before the COVID hit, all of the basic texts 
were given to the judges, the probation officers, and parole officers. Those that already had them did not take them. So therefore, they returned them or they set them in the office so when the next one steps up, that they will be there for them. And a lot of the drug court officers have been with us for so long that they know who we are. So it was the main thing is making sure that your participants know who we are because they're good for pushing AA. You know, they don't push AA. But now within the meetings itself, in our areas in New Jersey, they are mandated to go to meetings. So we let them know who we are. And the probation officers, parole officers sit in the parking lot, they hang out, they see who's coming in and out, and they recognize us, you know, because I was a participant. Matter of fact, that's another story. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and as you see, this is, of course, the air, a layout. How many times we went back to region, how many times we were going back and forth. There was only two areas that voted no on this project uh, out of everybody. And, and it was very disheartening for those two areas to do so when they were the main areas that needed the help. And, and it's sad, but, you know, we're not there for them, we're there for who we can attract and what we continue to do. We don't let those people discourage us and we continue. We work with the Northern New Jersey region as well. We did a collaboration, we're separated the New Jersey region and the Northern New Jersey region. We formed the Ad Hoc Committee as well. We've been working along with each other, doing drug court, not just with drug court, but now we're doing the prisons. We're doing presentations. We've been on that for now two and a half years just with letter writing back and forth. We just got 5,000 more dollars worth of literature given into the prisons, and now we're getting them delivered in every one of the prisons that are in the state of New Jersey. We also have a JPEG tablet, which is, we have 8,000 of them in our correctional facilities, and right now we're waiting to get the new ones so they can upload literature from the World Services, and we're trying to get NA meetings in as a virtual meeting a lot of it right now is just red tape. Um, just getting back and forth. It's been going on for two years, but we're staying on them. We're constantly staying in touch. We're getting responses back. Uh, with COVID, people aren't in the office. So we have to be patient. You know, we can't, you know, just blow it off, but we consistently stay in touch. Every six to eight weeks, we send out another letter. We get responses back. This is where we at. It took us a year to get a letter just where they want us to send the books inside the prisons. We finally got, go ahead. So as we finish the drug court presentation, because my mind gets to run, I, I'll run through all this shit next time. Yeah, I'll be in the next, next slide. slide. I'll be out of here, you know. Uh, okay. Next slide. So as you see, the, it started in 2017, you know, just with IPs, doing the lip, reaching out, you know, and it, it took six, and like I said, it's six to two that it finally passed. And as we finished up with everything, we were able to get it in, and um, and we continue to reach out to to the judges and to make sure when they reopen again. But the, as we're doing, they're doing a lot of virtual meetings. They have a list of where we are on the local meeting list as well as the regional list. They can chime in at any time because we have everything up on our website. Next slide. Okay, this is more of uh, our information, how we went out to them, how long it took us. This is more of the timeline. These are all the presentations that we had did to them, uh, virtually our communications, uh, the virtual resources. Each one of them we took, and we, um, as the Atlantic City one that Mickey was involved with, the, one up top was another one to the drug court presentation to the, all the judges. So we're staying involved and we're doing them virtually as well. So we're staying in their face. We let them know that Narcotics Anonymous is here just like y'all lock us up. We're here, we're clean, and we're doing what we need to do. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. Oh, so you just don't let me do all this shit. Huh? Yeah. Okay, keep going. Next one. Next slide. <laughs> Yeah. Now, this was our biggest project. This was, it took us a year and a half, two years with our development. Um, this was on, it took us from 2017, 2018, just with the correspondence, just within the New Jersey Transit. 
And then we had to deal with the ad company that wanted $100,000 for the ads. Mm. Well, we ended up getting $100,000 worth of ads for $10,000. Next slide. Come on, man. There we go. <laughs> so the total cost, as in, in the breakdown, you know, it was 19 interior posters, 1,100 exteriors, and total cost came to $9,000. $564.55. Most of it was done with the artwork. A lot of the slots were given to us on the inside of the buses, and they gave it to us only for six to eight weeks. It ended up running for six months because no one picked up the ads and they let the ads stay on the buses and they continued to run. Next slide. Next. That's the contract. That's a, yeah, that was our contract breakdown. Yeah. Here's our correspondent back and forth, our communication, our letters, all the notes we put in, the hard work that we did, how much it cost for us to do each one of the layouts. Next, some more of the contract. And this is how the buses ran. As you can see, it was extensive throughout the state of New Jersey. Each one of the bus lines from Elizabeth to Winfield, each one of them had each one of these red lines is where the buses were that we had posters on. So we went from all the way from Cape May all the way up into New York. Actually, not Cape May, but Atlantic City area, all the way up into New York, and they were running every day. So the Port Authority, if they were in the Port Authority, they saw it. And this is more of the contract, our final letters. Oh, that's this year. Okay. Yeah, and now we're going back at it again for this year. We're reproposing to do it again. Our reason is fortunate enough. They funded the first one for ten thousand dollars. It passed with no problem. We had the money coming back from our convention, and we had great support for doing so. And this, I'm gonna turn it back to Mickey. <laughs> and do something. <laughs> I'm uh, one of the issues with the uh, have you the, seen uh, it? Hospitals? When you're looking and for um, support, would you go up? No, somebody's trying to speak with me. Oh. Uh, when you're looking for support for a big project like a bus poster or something like that, what you, that support usually starts out as vicious attacks and how we're violating yeah. conditions yeah. and how we're stepping outside the principles. Yeah. One of the things we learn in public relations is to relate. <laughs> and realize that we're here to uh, do what the fellowship asks of us. But sometimes we call, we run into situations that we call teaching moments. Mm -hmm. And that's when everybody says, you're outside the traditions, we should bring you outside our past and out of us because you're in violation of everything. So we use those times to discuss how we're trying to carry the message and use that as an opportunity to raise the awareness. But sometimes it doesn't go over as gently as we think it will. Mm -hmm. uh, also, there's a level of risk you could see the slide back there. Uh, the contract had to be signed three weeks before the region made the final approval. So there was a lot of horse trading and discussion and things that go on with big projects as a risk. This project was very unique. This was a virtual exhibit booth that was done at a uh, the largest New Jersey treatment provider present uh, conference that, if you look at the dates on it, uh, go to the next one. The dates on it, next slide. Uh, we went into COVID in March of 2020. This conference was supposed to happen. Uh, they canceled the conference. They switched it to a virtual conference in May of 2020. So, or June of 2020. We found out in April of 2020, we were going to create a virtual exhibit booth. And we all said, okay, we don't know what that is, but we already paid the money. There's usually under providers, 75 of the exhibit booths canceled out. Narcotics Anonymous was one of 25 exhibit booths that stayed in. Um, mostly because we're addicts and we said, no, we don't know what we're doing. We have no idea, but this is some neat shit, so we're going to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked to everybody. We said, okay, we don't know what we're doing, but we're in. So, next slide. If it, 
If you look at that, you can see everything. That, this is everything that's in it. It's hard to read. So we had a live presentation, statewide website, NA literature link to NAWS, uh, documents link, public relations link, a live Zoom link the whole time the thing was going on with participants in public relations from the New Jersey region, a lot of the US and actually from around the world. Uh, thank you to NECF. Um, we had the RSC, HNI, uh, PI website, the History and Archives, Regional Delegate, Directory, Fun Line, Zonal, and World Service participants. This took a lot of networking to bring everybody to the table. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Also, it all had to be put together. All these things had to be loaded in, the artwork had to be done, and in typical committee standpoint, we spent like a third of our time fighting over things like the logo or <laughs> banner across the top. Right, right. What happened then? Two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> we had six weeks, two weeks to fight about what logo were we going to use. Right. Several logos. Next slide. Uh, these are all the things that had to be decided. This is all the, we loaded up different documents, posters, the history of NA, a couple PowerPoints, the website. Next slide. So it was very entailed. Out of 100 normal exhibit booths, there was only like 24 of them, Narcotics Anonymous was in there. Next slide. The real benefit to this, this is what it looked like. That was a running PSA. All of the links on the right side there were all live links they went into. Next slide, we have a live chat that went on. Uh, this was a live chat. There was also a live Zoom. Next slide. Uh, this was, we actually got the, the recordings of all the slides. Next slide. The real benefit to this, that's with the back, stop there. Uh, 383 professional contacts. We got their name, their company, their email address. This gave our public relations committee a resource during COVID in the middle of a shutdown to start sending out and reaching out to all the treatment professionals in New Jersey. We started sending them posters and information and it gave us a direct contact to let them know we're still here. Uh, this was probably the biggest night off. Next slide. Uh, this project uh, was, what's that? That's what we just finished up. This is the one, uh, this was an education and this was a journey. And this actually took a long time. The end product was what you're seeing here. Part of it was we sent uh, $5,000 worth of literature into the facilities. Uh, next slide. This all started out with, actually it started in more in 2020 with the regional delegate from Northern New Jersey and some of us talking about taking literature into the jails in New Jersey. So we went to the HMI committee in February of New Jersey, uh, uh, 2020, and the top line there says, some of the can so, is it on the top? We failed, go to the next slide, yeah. This we formed a committee because discussion of the failed motions of the Southern New Jersey H9 committee. We went to the H9 committee uh, and said, oh, we're going to start talking about sending more basic texts into the jail. And the H9 committee said, how much research did you do? Did you get the contacts? Have you talked to anybody? Why are you doing this? And, you know, like, run this through and work it with us. They voted no. So uh, we, we got our feelings hurt. Uh, next slide. But then we formed a joint work group and we said, you know what? They're right. We brought in the HI Public Information Committee from two different regions and they formed a joint ad hoc committee to sit down for everybody to come together and discuss what do we really need to do with the Department of Corrections. But what happened right after we did this was COVID. So this was before COVID, then COVID hit. Um, I'm going to be about committee. three minutes remaining. I'm going to be able to really quick. Keep going, next slide. Uh, yeah, because I'll talk forever. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, we came up with a list of needs within the committee and started discussing it. So the committee, the yeah, committee meeting came together. Next slide. Uh, we started an agenda. We started looking at it, putting it together. Two regions, they're breaking up projects. Next slide. We came up with a list of actual projects. These were all the different projects we started working on with the Department of Corrections. Next slide. Then we contacted the Department of Corrections. 
We did a live Zoom presentation uh, to the Department of Corrections. Go through the next, next three slides pretty quickly. What we did was a presentation to the Department of Corrections with both regions and uh, Northeast Ohio Forum. Next slide. Uh, we presented Narcotics Anonymous. Next slide. Presented H and I. Sat down with them. Next slide. Then we sat down and started talking to them about what their needs were. We've got the literature sent out. Now we'll be sitting down with H and I to take these different projects into each of the different state facilities. Uh, we have uh, 11 state correctional prisons uh, with over 8,000 inmates that we will be uh, looking at bringing in resources. Anything else do we have? Nope. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Um, does anyone here have any questions, concerns? Anyone online? Does anyone have their hand raised online? Can you just unmute yourself and let us know? My question to you guys is, what was the process of getting it from $100,000 to $10,000? What did you utilize? Who did you utilize? And how did that work? It actually went reverse. What we originally approached, and the, the company that's up here does New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and parts of Pennsylvania. So uh, not that I like to promote companies, but it's the same company as it uses. So we will make that information available. Thank you. Uh, the way it worked was we had to purchase, and it actually changed several times. They said, oh, we can do this or that. The final deal that we came up with was we had to purchase $6,000 worth of exterior bus posters. We had to wait till the timing was right when they couldn't sell optimum times, like January and February through May. So it's taking their time, more like after an election, where all of a sudden they're, they're covering up space. So you have to work in their time frame. And be, then we paid for the artwork to develop 1,100 bus posters. We paid for the artwork on the 1,100 bus posters, which was like $2,600. They gave us 1,100 free uh, spaces in the buses. And they also gave us several uh, not free gratis. Uh, actually, I don't know if I get into that. But it worked out. It, since we're a nonprofit corporation with a need, uh, they gave us additional services. But the spaces and everything that we had together, the retail value of was about $100,000. But you start out, we need nonprofit space. And what do we have to pay for to get what we can get? There's gradients and all that. Thank you.